there's life after the wedding. After the wedding, there are bills to pay, there's pampas, there's lights, there's food, there's rents, there's a whole lot to pay for. So please don't empty your account, don't empty your husband's account. Make sure there's something left that can take you for the next three months. If there's no income at all, there should just be that money that can take you for another three months. Hello, my name is Moron Ke. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about how to create a wedding budget. To create a wedding budget, you need to have access to Excel or, or numbers, depending on your operating system. I use a MacBook, so I work with, I'm working with um, pages, sorry, numbers for this episode. However, if you use Microsoft Word, and Microsoft I mean, you can always work with Excel and still get the same results. So the first step is to create 10 columns. If you look on the screen, I've created 10 columns with different sections. I would um, mention what description goes into each column and how it's going to be broken down. The first column has items. Under items, you will list everything you will need for the wedding, from stationery to grooming. For example, we have stationery first. And then under stationery, we have personalized men monograms, invitation cards, menu cards, driver's meal tickets. Afterwards, we have grooming. Under grooming, we have makeup, we have hair, we have wedding dress, everything that comes under grooming, as long as it has to do with your attire, your hair, your eyebrow, or your spa treatment, spa treatment, everything comes under it. Next is venue. Then you have decor, then you have rentals. What are you renting? Are you renting chairs? Are you renting tables? Are you are you renting cars? List everything. Fast forward, we have food and drinks. On our food and drinks, we have starter, say small chop, pepper soup, or whatever you decide to go with as starter. Then main dish, everything that you have on that main dish, you will list it there. And then um, everything, um, driver's meal, desserts, cake, drinks, cocktails, um, then the next subheading is entertainment. Under entertainment, you have MC, band, DJ, special effects, um, special performance. This is my own um, budget estimate. However, if there are other things that you would like to add, like under entertainment, we can have stuff like the mini band, say a mini band or cultural dance group. All of that should be put under entertainment. Then we have personnel. We have personal. Under personal, we have event security. We have um, hostesses and all of that. Then we have technical. Under technical, we have photography, videography, live feed. If you have um, ambience light, yeah, an ambience lighting theme, you can list it there. Ambience lighting. We have a sound team. Everything that has to do with technical comes under technical. The next column is going to have description. Description basically describes everything that's been written under the item. For example, we have um, rental, where we have geo. I'm sorry, where we have chairs. What kind of chairs do you want to work with? Do you want to work with Chevari chairs? Do you want to work with geo chairs? Do you want to work with angel chairs? Angel chairs, you know, state, be specific. What kind of chairs? List it there. Food, for example, we have starter. What comes under starter? Small chops. Main dish, what comes under main dish? Nigerian and Chinese menu, or Nigerian menu, or um, continental menu, you know? Make it comprehensive. Ensure that you are listing each and every um, item you're going to be using on your wedding day in the description. Uh, moving forward, under drinks, what kind of drinks are you having? Wine, red wine, white wine, beer, champagne, list all of that there. Um, under personnel, professional event security, all that should be listed comprehensively under the description. Then moving forward, the next column is quantity. Next column is quantity. Say, um, station, under stationery, for example, we have invitation cards. How many invitation cards do you intend to have? 300. You list it there. Chairs, for example, say, well, I, I already wrote G Dior chairs, I already done my description, and then afterwards I have quantity, and I'm looking at having 600 chairs, we list it there. So quantity is just basically you itemizing the number of items you're using for what has been stated in items and what has been described. 
So moving forward, we have an estimate. An estimate is an idea of what you intend to spend. For example, on that personalized monogram, we have 20,000. That's your budget. That's what you intend to spend on your estimates. On that invitation, we have 300,000. That's what you intend to spend on your um, invitation card. So basically, just an idea. If you don't know how much this things cost, you can always call different vendors within the um different vendors that have the same service that you're looking for and then compare their prices that way you can know the average price of what that would um what that would be and it can help inform your budget moving forward to the fifth column what we have under the fifth column is the actual price the actual price is what you have agreed with the vendor now your actual price shouldn't go above your estimated budget your estimated budget is what I, I have, I, what we have highlighted in the previous column. So, say for example, now personalized mono, personalized monogram is twenty thousand naira. Your actual price shouldn't be more than twenty thousand naira. It can be nineteen thousand. It can be nineteen nineteen thousand five hundred. It can be nineteen thousand nine hundred and ninety. But it shouldn't be twenty. It shouldn't be above twenty thousand naira. Now, the sixth column we have deposits. Now that you have agreed on the price with the vendor and we already have an actual price a deposit will be made to, to secure the client to sorry to secure the vendor now depending on your agreement with the vendor say you have agreed 70 30 70 um, 30 60 40 or 90 10 you make a first deposit once you have made that deposit list it in the um in your budget estimate and how how much you have i like how much you have paid so for example now we have an actual price at ten thousand naira for the personalized men monogram on that deposit we have eight thousand naira meaning the sum of eight thousand naira has been paid and then there's a balance of two thousand naira to be paid moving forward the next column we have balance balance is what is left of the deposit that has been paid so in the deposit we had eight thousand naira for like i just um, explained and then balance we have twenty thousand naira that's yet to be paid so as soon as that is paid as soon as the two thousand naira is paid it should be removed from the sum of balance and added to the deposit and added to the deposit to form like the total amount to be paid after balance we have status status is like a it's like a track it's like a tracker to help you know what vendors you have selected what vendors has been paid what um it's, it's just helping you to track track your budget estimates so you know how far you've gone what needs to be done what is yet to be done so for example now i've highlighted um personalized monogram in yellow meaning it has been started green stands for it's completely done and then when it's vacant with no colors it means nothing has been done so on that um, personalized monogram, I have highlighted it yellow because we have already started. We have already paid the deposit and we already have a vendor. So we have started the process. But once the balance is paid, then it will, it will, it will change to green, meaning that has been completely sorted. Now, if you move forward, you will see menu card. On that menu card, there is no status there. Why? Because we do not have an actual price. We do not have a deposit and we do not have a balance because we haven't concluded on that yet. After status, moving forward, we have the vendor. Now, the personalized monogram, we have negotiated, we have the actual price, we paid the deposit, we have plans, and um, steps have been updated to started. Next is the vendor. What vendor have you agreed this with? List his name there. I have written Kasak. So, that has been listed there. Then, moving forward, comments. What comes on that comments? Um, comments can be like your agreements maybe um highlights or bits of your agreements with the vendor say you agreed on a classic or a simple logo a simple monogram you can just highlight today simple monogram with a um, time romance font um, font you can just highlight it there say the invitation cards you have like you're doing um 200 box invitations and 100 um envelopes invitation you highlight it there in the comment section highlight it there in the comment section so basically, once all this has been com concluded, on the bottom part of your estimate, you would have a column that says total. So on that total, it will, you would calculate everything that you have listed 
and then at every point like i personally have a formula that i've created so it automatically calculates whatever the total is you can create the so you can create the formula yourself but that's like a topic for another day you know but yeah calculate everything and then put the total there so that way you are able to track from time to time you know how much is meant to be spent now let me add that if your budget is say 10 million while creating the budget estimate it's okay to have an open mind if it goes past 10 million then you can go back to your budget you can look up everything that you have written and see where you can do some plus or minus if say the wedding dress is 2 million naira and you want to go with the cheaper option of renting a dress you can take it out and then reduce it to say 50 50k or 100k for rental say the small chops you already planned on having 500 pieces 500 plates of small chops you can reduce it to 250 say um back of foods like um beggary you planned on having 300 you can reduce it to 200 you know so you can just come down plus and minus plus and minus and then take down and reduce or reduce quantity so it, you can save um cost aside from that there are things that you feel like you don't really really need for example there's car rentals here if you think you can use your family's car a cousin or a boss or somebody and you don't need to rent then you can strike that out that way you're able to you're able to minimize your spendings to make your budget work a few tips to note when making your wedding budget one be realistic talk to your parents talk to the groom how much is readily available if everything that you have put together is six million your budget is six million everything you'll be spending on your wedding has to fall within that six million it mustn't go past it you have uncles aunties maybe bosses or people that will say oh i'll give you five hundred thousand i'll give you one million you never know when they're going to give it to you if you depend on the money and then they mess you up what are you going to do at the end of the day they only promise you and they don't have to give it to you so then it's always best to be realistic stick to what you have on ground Tip two, cut down your guest size. If you're already going way above your budget, your estimated budget, best thing you can do is to cut down your guest size. That way you're cutting down the quantity of food, drinks, and decor, and everything you'll be needing for that event. So cut down your guest size, you will save a lot of money. Tip three, there's life after the wedding. After the wedding, there are bills to pay. There's pampas, there's lights, there's food there's rent there's a whole lot to pay for so please don't empty your account don't empty your husband's account make sure there's something left that can take you for the next three months if there's no income at all there should just be that money that can take you for another three months tip four learn to say no so you have seen this dress that is really gorgeous and all that and your budget is 50k and you told the designer you're going with the 50k dress and then she brings up this other really amazing one with nice stones and all and she says hmm, it's just 60k add, add 10k and then this dress is yours learn to say no your budget is 50k stick with the 50k dress and go <laughs> i know it's easy to say i just 10,000 naira. yeah that 10,000 naira can make a huge difference you can you can buy at least another 30 or 40 plates of small chops so be considerate learn to say no thank you for watching my youtube channel Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also share with your family and friends on WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and every other social media platform. Thank you.